So we took a look at insertion sort previously to understand how it works, but then also to um, capture the number of comparisons, total number of comparisons. And so what we saw for this one is that at each step of the algorithm, as we kind of opened up this, um, this array, right, we would take an unsorted portion, such as we'd say that eight initially actually is eight, is, uh, is the sorted portion and five and nine two six three would be unsorted we would keep kind of incrementing and opening that up so that our sorted array started as size one moved to size two with a five eight moved to size three with five eight nine moved to size four and each time we had to do this there were some comparisons and swaps and if we were to count those comparisons and swaps we'd end up coming up with the values that are shown here the 13 and 10. What I want to show is that in the worst case scenario, the number of, of comparisons ends up going up to um, in, in a very particular way that leads to a conclusion of insertion sort. Um, if you had n items, there'd be one comparison initially in that first line and then two comparisons and then three comparisons and then four comparisons and then possibly five so it, it kind of increments up um, in a way that's predictable so that we know if we have n comparisons um, or n items rather if we have n items we therefore will have one plus two plus three plus all the way up to n minus one comparisons um, and and we can show that that sequence that number of comparisons that we end up with that's proportional to the number of items can be represented um, with something like this n times n minus 1 over 2 these are equivalent and um, and if you were to try out some of these values you'd see that that's the that, that you get equivalent numbers um, and so the number of comparisons ultimately is proportional and dominated by this n squared term so n squared minus n um, that n squared term as n gets large always dominates over the smaller term so let's jump into this a bit so um, Let's say that we have, once again, as we did before, we have some number of items in our array. Um, let's say that we have a 9, an 8, a 7, a 5, a 2, and a, uh, let's say we have a 1 here. Um, so that's our array. I want to know do the analysis that we've done before and do a count, get a count of the number of comparisons um, and swaps associated with this sequence of values. So um, they're indexed one, two, three, four, and five. So we have six items in our array. So my conclusion that I want to reach is that we'll see that we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus n minus 1, which is 6, uh, uh, 6 minus 1 rather, and we should end up with this many comparisons. Um, 3 and 3 is 6, 10, 15. We should end up with 15 comparisons. That's what I'm expecting. And then also, the shortcut for 1 plus 2 all the way up to n minus 1, that series can simply be represented as n times n minus 1 over 2, so that we don't always have to do the sum. We can just plug it into this equation. So for example, if n is 6, we, if we take that shortcut, we'd end up with 6 times 6 minus 1 all over 2, which is 6 times 5, 30, all over 2, um, which is 15. So that's just one example that shows either we can do the series or we can use this closed form representation of the, of the series. 
So um, let's dig in. So the way insertion sort works, he says that portion is already sorted. And so, and then what you'll do is take the eight and do some number of comparisons and swaps as necessary. So in this case, since eight is less than nine, there's going to be a comparison and there's going to be a swap. So that's going to be one comparison and one swap. Notice that this array is um, descending, is sorted in a descending manner. Um, so let's go ahead and write what we have here. We have the eight and the nine, um, and that is our sorted portion. And in our unsorted portion now, what we have is our seven, five, two, and one. So now we take our seven. There's a comparison with the nine and a swap and a comparison with the eight and a swap. So two comparisons and two swaps. So with the seven, for that particular row here, we do two comparisons, two swaps to end up with a seven, eight, and a nine. And then five, two, one, has not been addressed yet. So I'll split that up like that. Now we have a five. That five, there's a comparison against the nine, he's smaller, so we swap. Another comparison, he's smaller, so we swap. Another comparison, and he we swap. So for every comparison, there was a swap. Um, so there were three comparisons and three swaps. So that our five ends up being placed here at the beginning, five, seven, eight, and a nine. And then we're left with our two and one sitting out there. Now with that two, we're gonna bring him in to the sorted portion of the array. So um, there is a comparison and the swap There is a comparison with the eight now and a swap. There's a comparison with the seven now and a swap so that he ends up here. And there is a comparison with that, um, with that two and the five so that he ends up here. So the two, five, seven, eight, nine is what we end up with. So double check that and make sure that that makes sense to you. But it's a, we end up with a two, five, seven, eight, and a nine to place two in his final position. And we're sitting there with a one in our unsorted portion of the array. So, um, but to get our two into position, comparison, swap, that's one, comparison, and a swap, that's two, comparison and a swap, that's three, and a comparison and a swap. So there was there were four comparisons and four swaps to get to in his final place. And then finally, the same situation happens with um, the one, compare swap, compare swap two, compare swap three, compare swap four, and five. So we end up with a one, two, five, seven, eight, and a nine and our final result is this so for um, the n equals six items the total number of comparisons um, is the sum of these values, one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Um, and in general, that's going to be the case for any n items. The number of comparisons will be one plus two plus three, all the way up to n minus one um, comparisons. So how do we represent that 
um, in closed form. So the number of comparisons, let's just call this series S1. That's the number of comparisons. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, let's do one thing. Notice that in our number of comparisons, in our largest number, there's n minus 1, 6. This one is n minus 2, n minus 3. So um, this is exactly the same thing. Let's say n minus 2 and n minus 1. So this is like 6 minus 1 is a 5, 6 minus 1 is a 4. Now what I'm going to do is write this very same sequence backwards. n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, and then on the lower end there's my 1 and there's my 2. So those are my terms and when I add these two together they are equivalent, right? Um, but two of those if I add those two together, n minus 1 plus 1 is just an n. n minus 2 plus 2 is just another n. n minus 3 plus 3 is just another n. If you do all of that, the answer is that we have some number of n's. How many of these do we have? Well, n minus 1 of them. So the answer is n minus 1 times n or the series itself is just, I'll swap those two around, n times n minus 1 all over n. Therefore, if I want to know how many comparisons or swaps, I have two choices, um, or the number of comparisons in the worst case, I have two choices. If I have, for example, um, eight items, I could do this. I could say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 or I could just simply say um, uh, let's use our shortcut 7 times 7 minus 1 all over 2 that's 42 over 2 which is 21 and if you were to add those values up together what you would see is that that should also give you a 21 um, 7 to 6 is 13 and that's an 18 7 that's a 9, 8, 9, um, 7 and 5, 12, 18. Let's do that again. 18 plus 9 is 27, plus 1 is 28. So that gives me 28. What went wrong? This is what went wrong. Um, I didn't plug in the right values in. Since n was 8, this should have been an 8 times 7 over 2. 56 over 2 is 28 to get the equivalent representation. So there we have it. Um, the worst case scenario for insertion sort is when it's reverse sorted. And what we'll find is if there's any way that we can avoid this worst case scenario um, we can significantly increase the performance. So if we, um, as shell sort does, if we can maybe go, say, every certain distance and sort those, right, so that we end up with a 2, 7, 9, and then do our next our next group so right now we're just doing a so-called three a two sort because they're two increments away and then I t if you take your your eight five and one eight five and one and sort those eight five and one become a one a five and an eight what you end up with is with not a whole lot of operations right you do a sort on the blue subarray of size 3 and then the yellow subarray of size 3 
what you end up doing is um, essentially enough work to mitigate against, to work against the worst case scenario. So 217598 um, will end up giving us a much better efficiency. And that's what the shell sort algorithm does. It does some um, distancing between, um, between items and some swaps to help us work against the worst case scenario.